I'm getting ready to do a wax base coat on a variety of surfaces. So I just wanted to show you how I start. I have a piece of cardboard underneath my melting pot and underneath the tack iron, which isn't on yet um, because this he heats up pretty quickly. Um, the reason that I'm doing that is because a piece of paper isn't sufficient to protect my work surface. The wax really will just sink right on through paper and uh, attach itself to the table surface and I don't want that. So I'm trying to keep my uh, wax confined to a piece of cardboard. Um, if I wasn't doing this on video, I would probably get a, a really huge piece of cardboard and throw everything on it. Uh, and that way all my surfaces would be protected. So this melting pot is set at 220, which is a little hot. Um, and it's been going for probably about five minutes and it's just starting to soften up a little bit. Uh, not quite liqu liquefied yet, but soft enough so that I can pull my brush out. Um, and these are the two pieces that I pitched in here uh, so that I'll have enough wax to work. Um, you don't need a lot. Uh, um, this is a technique that doesn't require a lot of wax, uh, just a little bit, um, but I don't want to run out. So there you go. So I'm going to leave the lid on this and when it gets m mostly liquefied, I'll dial down the temperature a little bit and start heating this up. The surfaces I'm going to use today, uh, starting on this end, the lightest weight one, an index card. This is a um, cut from a manila folder, 140 pound watercolor paper, and lightweight chipboard. Um, and the first thing I wanna do uh, to start my collage is lay down uh, a very thin layer of wax. Sort of like when you start collaging with matte medium, you lay down a little matte medium, press whatever it is you're gonna put into it, and then matte medium over the top. Same deal with wax, only we're gonna use a lot less. Um, and I'm starting with these four to show you uh, what will happen to each of them as I lay down a little bit of wax. So let me uh, let this wax warm up and then we'll get started. Okay, so this has been sitting for about 10 minutes and it's starting to liquefy and I can get started while it continues to melt. So what I'm going to do here is start with the index card and you can see that this wax is already solidified. It happens just that fast. So what I'm doing is just getting a little wax onto this card. And I don't want to brush it too much because what's happening is it's starting to pill a little bit. That's not good. Just want to move the, the wet wax onto this surface. And then I'm going to take my handy tack iron and move it around. And you can see that this index card is turning transparent. The wax is going all the way through and it's turning this lightweight stock transparent. And I've got a little brush hair in here. So tweezers, not my fingers. Do not stick your fingers in this wax. Even if it looks like it's solid, it's still hot. Okay, so as postcards go, this probably won't work because look at that, waxed all the way through. But um, if you wanted to draw something on this and then cut it out and use it as an applied element, might be kind of cool. If you wanted to ink on this and then press it into some wax, that might be kind of cool. So 
as you play with surfaces, learn from what happens. Even if it's a complete bust, ask yourself, what can I do with this? So let's move on to Manila Folder. Kind of the same thing. It's um, it's turning this Manila sort of transparent. So probably not postcards from Manila folders, but this sort of golden color combined with the amber of the wax, kind of a nice vintage effect, right? So if you inked on this and then cut out some elements and applied it to a postcard. Might be kind of cool. Okay. A 140 pound watercolor paper. see what we get here. All right. Not, not completely opaque, but pretty good. Don't stick your fingers in the wax. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit of wax went through, but not a lot. Maybe heavier watercolor paper would work. And now, my favorite surface, way over here, chipboard. That beautiful brown color turns nice and dark. And nothing went through. All of that wax is around the outer edges. So, if you want to make postcards, Chipboard is the lightest weight thing that you should start with. And while I'm thinking of it, this is the chipboard that I just waxed. This is the back side of it. So wax is leaking all along the edges. There's not really a good way to stop that. You can't really tape this down or pin it down gracefully. So now I'm wondering if I should really be making postcards at all because the back side is going to be kind of a waxy mess. So maybe what I'm making is little collages that I'll send in envelopes instead of postcards. Because the more I think about it, uh, the more I think that sending a waxed surface through the mail naked might not be the best choice. So I'm making little collages instead of postcards.